Monday nets. I am just gonna wait for a couple of seconds to see if anybody's gonna join us live tonight. And then we're gonna start talking about Kitchener stitching. I've got a few little samples here. We'll talk about Kitchener stitching and stockinette stitch in garter stitch. And I'll show you a little sample of one by one ribbing. And then I'll show you who won the yarn for the new start Monday cast on this week. Instagram polls and messages over on Instagram were really, really, really close. I think this is the closest poll that we have had since I've started doing this um, a few weeks ago. So I'll show you which yarn won and I will show you, Daisy's come up here to say hello apparently too. <laughs> then I'll show you what I got done last week, what last week's New Start Monday yarn turned into and the sock progress from the week before. Hi kitty. All right, we may have a cat show up here in a minute. So stockinette stitch. Lisa, how are you? Good morning. Good morning to you. <laughs> um, yeah, it's late. It's later in the evening, Monday night here. So I am glad you're tuning in from wherever you are. That's fantastic. So stock or um, Kitchener stitch. I'm guessing everybody, I'm assuming everybody knows what Kitchener stitch and has probably done it a um a time or two probably with socks hey amber happy birthday we have a birthday girl joining us tonight so kitchener stitch kitchener stitch i generally think of using it for socks oh lisa you're in australia oh fantastic well happy tuesday to you so but kitchener's you kitchener stitch is used anytime that you're going to join two sets of live stitches together hey sabrina and I think most of us, I don't know, I always think about using it for socks when you're doing um, cuff down socks and you're going to close up the toe. So let's start out with stockinette. We'll just pretend this is, this could be a sock. It could be a shawl, two, um, two halves of a shawl that you're joining at the center back. And um, so we will start with this. So you have got live stitches on your needles and you're going to cut your working yarn so you have got a length of yarn to work with. I usually estimate about six times the width of my working yarn but leave lots because you certainly don't want to run short part way through when you're Kitchener stitching and having to join yarn. That would just be um, Annoying, <laughs> for sure. Naughty Yarns, how are you? Welcome. So you have cut your working yarn. And, okay, I'm gonna, I think I'm going to have to put Daisy down. We'll, we can say hi. Daisy, you want to say hi? I know. There you go. Now you're going to have to go. Because I don't think I can do talk and read and Kitchener stitch and deal with a cat on my lap all at the same time. So we're going to cut our working yarn and then you're just going to thread it onto a darning needle. So you want to have the same number of stitches on each needle. Technically you want the same number of stitches. Now lots of times I have come down to Kitchener stitch and I may be a stitch, hopefully just one stitch off, maybe two sometimes. Um, you know, if you're doing socks and you're doing your toe decreases, I don't know about you, but sometimes I get, hey, everybody that's coming in here now, hey, Joanne. Um, sometimes I forget it. I forget a decrease. I do. And so sometimes I come down here and my stitches are not equal. If they're not equal, you can fudge it a little bit, right? On this, on the needle that you have one extra stitch, at some point you can work two stitches together and kind of fudge it. But for teaching purposes, we're going to say you have the same number of stitches on each needle. You want the wrong sides facing. You want the wrong sides together. So what you're looking at is the right side. You've cut your working yarn. You've threaded onto a darning needle. And you want the working yarn to be on the right hand side. Your needle tips are pointing to the right. And now we're going to do a setup stitch. We're going to take our darning needle and we're going to work into the first stitch on the front needle. 
and the first stitch on the back needle. So what I'm calling the front and back is just the, the stitch, the needle that's closest to me is my front, the one that's behind is the back needle. And we are going to go in purlwise. So if for those of you who have never done Kitchener stitch, you're going to want to go in some stitches knitwise, knitwise, and some purlwise. Just as if, hi Valerie, as if you were knitting. And it does make a difference. Making by keeping that consistent, those knit and purls, it's going to give you a seamless finish here. You're not going to be able to see a seam. The knit stitches are just going to run from one knit fabric piece over to the other knit fabric piece. Don't stress too much. If you happen to get partway across your project and then all of a sudden you lose track of where you are, it will cause a little blip in your seam. But really, is it a big enough deal to stop it and pick it all out? Probably not, because most likely this is going to be in the heat or the toe of a sock. Nobody's going to be looking that close, right? So in that case, I would say just carry on. But it's a good idea for the first few times until you get the rhythm and the mantra down to kind of lock yourself in your bedroom. <laughs> Don't have any, any interruptions and just work through all of your stitches from start to finish all in one go without any interruptions until you get the hang of it. And if you do have to stop it part way through, I, I should never pet Daisy when I'm doing this because I know I always get cat hair. Anyways, if if I have to stop part way, I always make sure I finish kind of at the end of the repeat. So I always finish after I'm done both stitches on the back needle. So I can, you know, check my phone, answer a text or whatever. And when I pick it up to start again, I know I'm starting at the beginning of my repeat on the front needle. So then that's, that's just my way of trying not to mess it up. We're going to work that set up stitch. So for stockinette, we're going to go into this first stitch on my front needle. I'm going in purl wise and it stays on the needle tip. I will write all of this down in the description box after we're finished. So if anybody does want to go back and, uh, and take a look, it'll be there. The back stitch, I'm going to go in this, the back needle, first stitch, I'm going to go in knitwise and it's going to stay on the needle. So there's our setup, just going in the first stitch of both needles. Now we're just going to repeat, we're going to work two stitches on the front needle. The first stitch always falls off. The second stitch stays on the needle. We go to the back needle and we're going to work through two stitches. The first stitch again always comes off. The second one always stays on. So each stitch as we're working across is going to have been worked through twice. And what we're working on is we're recreating another row of knit stitches across the top of our needle to join the stitches together. So our mantra now that we're going to repeat all the way across is knit and off. The first stitch on the front needle, we go in knitwise, slide it off. We work into the second stitch, purlwise and on. We go to the back, purlwise. I'm putting my, my darning needle in purlwise and that stitch comes off the needle. And I just pull this snug. You want to make sure that this working yarn is always going under the needle tips. Now I want to work the second stitch and it goes knitwise and it stays on. And just, it's always a little fiddly right at the beginning because you might have tails or something you don't want to get caught in there. So now I'm going to repeat that again. I go back to my front needle that's closest to me. I'm going to go in knitwise and take that first stitch off. Go into the next stitch on the front needle, purlwise, and it stays on. I move to the back. I go in purlwise and it comes off. The next stitch on the back, knitwise, and it stays on. 
And I like to I like to snug up the stitches as I'm going. You can leave them loose and then you can come back and you can you can work your way snug them up all the way across the row afterwards, but I like to just snug them up. So they're tight, not super, you know, not puckery tight, not loose, just a nice tight. How, what what what's the best way to describe that? Just so it looks even, just like a row of stitches, okay? So you just kind of, I find this super relaxing. It's like a dance. It's you just going back and forth. And I always think when I'm starting on the front side, the, the front needle, I'm looking at knit stitches. It's the right side. And I always think of the front needle as the right side. And typically the right side is knitting. Hey, Liz. So with this front, since it's right side, I always think knits. So I always know I'm starting off knitwise. I go in, knit and off, and then purl and on. Go to the back. The back is like the wrong side. Wrong side is typically purls. Start with a purl. Purl and off. Then on sec second stitch on the back is knit. So you're always alternating knits and purls, knits and purls. Come back to the front, knit and off, purl and on. Come to the back, purl and off, knit and on. So hopefully, whoops, that just popped off, but that's okay. Let's slide it back on. Hopefully you guys can say, are uh, repeating this, or kind of guessing ahead what I'm gonna say out loud. I'm back to the front. Front are knits. So I'm going in knitwise and off. Next stitch on the front is purl wise and on. I go to the back, which is like the wrong side, which means purl and off. And then second stitch on the back is knit and on. Come to the front, knit and off, purl and on. Come to the back, purl and off, knit and on. So the only thing that gets a little fiddly is just, I've got tails here, right? If this was a whole sock, I wouldn't be getting my working yarn kind of tangled on these ends that are sticking out here. But really rhythmic. Knitting off, purling on. And we go to the back, purling off, knitting on. Oops, did I just I might have just said that one wrong. Okay, back to the front. Knitting off, purling on. I hope I just didn't mess that up. As I was saying, how rhythmic and easy it is. Back to the back, purling off, knitting on. But when you're doing this at home, you'll find that it's you really quickly. I you. I mean, it took, probably took me a couple of pairs of socks before I really felt comfortable. But at, you know, at some point with, with doing it in stockinette stitch, because this is probably the most common way of doing it, after you've done a few pairs of socks, you're gonna get really comfortable doing it. And knitting on. So I'm back to the front. Hi, Anne. So I'm going knitting off. Purl and on. And if your working yarn gets kind of tangled, crossed over the, the, the needle, you just pull it down out of the way. And now to the back. I'm at the back, so I'm going purl and off, knitting on. And then when you get to the end, only have a couple more stitches to do. There we go. Knit and off, purling on the front. 
go to the back and I am purling off and knitting on. And then now I've got two stitches left at the end. I'm not going to be able to do the whole two stitches front and back because we don't have two, we don't have two stitches left. So I just work what's there. I come to the front and I take it off, knit, knitting off, and then go through the back, purling off. And then we'll be able to take a look at this. There's my stockinette. There is that stitch there got a little big, so maybe I could go in and tighten that up. But overall, that's not too bad. So we should be able to see our V stitches just come down in a column and work down, which looks pretty good, I would say. And I mean, you know, if there's a little blip in there, I don't think we need to worry too much about that. And the back side is pretty, um, yeah, there's, you know, not much of a seam in there. So it makes a nice, makes a nice toe on your sock. So there you go. So Kitchener Stitch in stockinette. Nothing to be scared of. With a little practice, it gets really easy and really, I truly find it really rhythmic and relaxing just to work across. And I'll show you my pot holder that I did this week. And I got a lot of practice, not, well, a lot, a lot, well, I guess practice, but a lot of rhythmic Kitchener stitching with it, and I really enjoyed it. And I put a, a Instagram poll up. I'm not sure what day that was because I was curious to see if I was the only one who found Kitchener stitching relaxing. Because so often I hear about people saying that they're like, oh no, I just do my socks toe up because I want to avoid kitchener stitching and and it's like oh I don't want people to be scared of it because it's not that bad but in the poll the majority of people said that they enjoyed kitchener stitching which really made me happy to hear that okay so that was stockinette and that is that that's got more moves in it right because you're doing different you're knitting and you're purling and you're purling and you're knitting and we move to garter stitch and it's not as tricky. Um, oh, did I? Yes, I did, Amber. I did work on my sweater. So let's go to garter stitch. This is not garter stitch. <laughs> Hold on. That's the next sample coming up. Let's pick this. This is garter stitch. Garter stitching in Kitchener stitching in garter stitch, that's what I want to say, is really easy because, hold on guys, I got to, uh, oh, I got to get, find a different comfy position here. Kitchener stitching in garter stitch is even easier because it's only half the, move, the, the movements with the darning needle. You are repeating the same stitches on the front needle as you are on the back. So let's give this a whirl. So the same thing. Hopefully you've got the same number of stitches on both your front needle and your back needle. You're going to put your wrong side, whatever you've determined, according to your project, is the wrong side. Wrong sides are going to face together. We've got wrong sides put together. So we've got the right side on the outside. We've cut our tail of yarn. And again, I kind of estimate six times the amount. I always go big, so always go a little more. It does mean you've got more yarn to pull through every stitch, but boy, you don't want to have to join part way across because that would, yeah, so that would just not be fun. So here we go. Again, everything's on the right hand side. Our working yarn is attached to the last stitch. It's on the right hand side of our work. Needle tips are pointing to the right. We have to do the setup stitch again. 
And what we're going to do is we're going to go in purlwise in the front needle and it stays on. Now, this is where that's the same as the way we started with the stockinette, and we do that same thing for the back. Go in purlwise. So, there's our setup. So, both our first stitch on front and back needle have now both been worked through. Now, all we're going to repeat is we're going to go through the back to the front needle. First stitch, we go in knitwise and it comes off. Second stitch on the front needle, purlwise and stays on. And we're going to repeat that front needle, back needle, front needle, back needle, all the way across. So knitwise and off, purlwise and on. And that's all there is to it. So let's, let's work across. Hey, Walter, how are you? Okay, so back to the front needle, first stitch, knitwise and off. Second, or now what is now the first stitch, but our second stitch we're working on the front needle, go in purlwise and leave it on. So now at the back, same thing. Come in knitwise on this for end stitch and slide it off. This next stitch that's on the back, we go in purlwise and it stays on. So again, we're still working two stitches front needle, two stitches back needle, the first stitch comes off, the second stitch stays on, but the stitch is the same on both needles, which is different from what we just did. So it's less things to think about. We come back to the first stitch on the front needle, knitwise and off. Oh, finished the second sleeve. That's fantastic. And now second stitch we go purlwise and on. Back to the back needle we're going to go in knitwise through here knitwise and we come off. Then we go purlwise and on. And again you can tighten it up as you're going, or you can go back and, and tighten it up at the end. Back to the front, knitwise and off. And then purlwise and on. Knitwise, <laughs> knitwise and off at the back, purlwise and on. And then hmm. okay. So back to the front. Hey Jocelyn, how are you? Knitwise and off. So we'll see. And pearlwise and on what this looks like. Back to the back needle, knitwise and off, and purlwise and on. And so we go all the way across. I may not go all the way on this one, but we'll see. We're getting that kind of that ditch look between our stitches here, which I'll show you in a minute. So knitwise and off. Oh, so Jocelyn, you're busy. So knitwise and off, purlwise and on. And then to the back, same thing. Knitwise and off and purlwise and on. So has anybody that's watching, have you guys done Kitchener Stitch and Garter Stitch before on any projects? This is what it's starting to look like. There's Sabrina. Oh my gosh, Sabrina, your roses are blooming. Oh my word. It was chilly here today. No roses blooming here today. We have some pansies blooming and tulips. 
Okay, so I will just go across here a little bit more. So back to the front, knit and off. Knit and off and purl in on. And has anybody, Amber, not you, you just do it for socks. I know, and there's very, um, yeah, I don't know, something on a shawl maybe, I don't know. Oh, because you usually do, okay, so Sabrina, you usually do socks toe up. Knitting off, purling on. Got to try to talk and remember what I'm doing here. Knitting off. Yeah, I, I mean, socks and stockinette is, is, is usually what we think of doing Kitchener stitch with, isn't it? Um, but now I'm going to need it for my headband. Oh, okay. So Sabrina was, was that Sabrina or Anne said they've never used it. Oops. Okay. See, I'm talking and I just kind of messed this up a little bit, but that's okay. I will, um, I think it was back here. We'll go back here. Knit wise enough. And purling on. Um, oh, yeah, Jocelyn in her crocheted socks. So, anyway, so this is just, I mean, it's good to know. And then, of course, like with YouTube, you can always um, just Google it anytime you need to a, a refresher, right? But the garter stitch is easy because it is just half as many stitches. Um, oh, that should have been another. Oh, Oh, okay. So you didn't know how to do the garter stitch. So you just did it in stockinette. Okay. Yeah. Now you have another way to do it. That's right. So. Yeah. See, and actually. I'm thinking that actually looks better on the inside. Actually there. I'm not sure why. Maybe my stitches were just a little too loose. But yeah, we're getting some garter stitch. It looks really good on that side. Not quite as good. That looks like just a, a looser. There, that's exactly what that looks like, isn't it? When you pull those, maybe I should have just pulled it a little tighter. But anyways, that is garter stitch. Let's move on to ribbing. And the ribbing is a little different again. We're going to do one by one ribbing tonight because it's the easiest. <laughs> two by two gets a little, um, not confusing, but I find with two by two, I haven't done it often enough that I need, I need to read it. I can't remember it off the top of my head, but I'm sure it's just like doing it in stockinette stitch. Once you've done it a few times, it will be a lot more intuitive. But I want to show you the one by one ribbing because it is kind of has an interesting concept behind it. And um, and it ends up looking pretty neat too when it's all stitched together. So same thing. So here's my one by one pieces. Oh no, Valerie's playing yarn chicken. Yikes. Okay, well, we'll I'll send you good vibes. So there we go. One by one ribbing. Again, I've got my two pieces, live stitches, hopefully the same number of stitches on the needle. I've estimated a good length of yarn and snipped it off from the working ball, putting it on a darning needle. I want everything to be on the right hand side. The working yarn, the needle tips pointing to the right, and I'm going to work this. So now I'm still going to do my setup stitches. I'm going to work the first stitch on the front needle, the first stitch on the back needle, and then work my way across. Still working two stitches on the front, two stitches on the back once I get past the setup. How I know what I'm going to work, whether it is a knit or a purl, if the stitch comes off the needle, you work the same 
as what the stitch is. So if the stitch is a knit and it's coming off the needle, you work it knitwise. If the stitch is staying on the needle, you work it the opposite way. So if it's a knit, you'll go in purlwise. Okay. I know it takes a little bit. You're like, oh, okay. So which way is which? So let's start with the setup. The setup stitches are stitches that stay on the needle. So stitches that stay on the needle are opposites. Okay. Let's see if I can remember this and talk and do it all at the same time. So on is opposite. Oh, on and on is opposite. So I have got a knit stitch here in front of me. So I'm going to go in purlwise, the opposite, and it stays on the needle. Now I come to my back needle here and I'm looking at it and it is a knit. So <laughs> this, um, it's a knit. So I'm going to go in purlwise because it's staying on and it's going to be the opposite. You know what? I feel like, okay, I can do this and talk. I can do this and talk. Um, do you line up the knits and pearls or knit that? You know what? It does not quite line up. And I tried um, like turning my stitches, like my little swatch and turning it around and, and I still couldn't get them to line up because it's, it's like, um, well, because it's, yeah, they don't. <laughs> Let's just say that, but it's close. It's close. Once you get a little sample done, I'll show, I'll show you. And the columns don't completely line up, but they're close. And by Kitchener stitching it off in pattern, there's, um, oh, okay. Yeah. So you said like a half step off. Yeah. That's, that's kind of what it's like. What was I going to say now? Oh, what was I going to say? I forget now. I think I was going to say, yeah, because your knits, your on one side, your knit columns, a knit column on the other side, it's a pearl column. It's, and it's like, like brioche is opposite like that too. So that's kind of, yeah, it does. We'll see. It looks okay. No. Oh, what I was saying was was casting off in pattern. It works better, even though your columns of knits don't go knit side, like knit on this fabric over and top and down to a knit. It still looks better casting it or Kitchener stitching it off in pattern as opposed to just doing it and stocking it and getting that knit row across there. Because then that obviously looks like it doesn't match. So, okay. Let me do that. See if I can talk and do this at the same time. So now we want to do off. Off is the same. So now I'm going to come and I'm going to look at my stitch and it's a knit. So I'm going in knit wise and off. Now I want to work the second stitch is staying on. So that's the opposite. It is a purl stitch. So I'm looking on my, on my, I'm looking and I'm seeing a purl stitch. So that means I'm going to go in knit wise and it stays on. Now I'm going to go to the back. This is going to be in one that comes off. Off is the same. So this was an, a knit. So I'm going to go in knit wise and take it off. The next stitch stays on. On is opposite. It's a purl. So I'm going to go in knit wise. Now I come back to the front needle. It's going to be off. Off is the same. It's a purl. So I'm going to go in purlwise. Purlwise and off. The second stitch on the front is going to stay on. On is opposite. It's a knit. So I'm going to go in purl. I come to the back. The back is off. Offs are the same. And it is a pearl, so I'm going in pearlwise. The 
the second stitch stays on, on is opposite, it's a knit, so I'm coming in purl. And then I come to the front, it's coming off, off is the same, it's a knit, so I go in knitwise. The next stitch stays on, on is opposite. I've got a purl, so that means I'm going in knitwise. This is starting to make some sense. The back stitch comes off, off is the same, and it was the knit. <laughs> I lost my darning needle. Off is the same. Second stitch on the back stays on, on is opposite, it's a purl, so I go in knitwise. Now I come back to the front, the first stitch is going to come off, off is the same, it's a purl, so I'm going in purlwise. Come to the second stitch, it's coming off. Off is opposite, it's a knit, so I'm going in purl. Getting it a little, I know it It uh, takes a little to get the hang of the, the opposites. And so now I'm going to the back, the back's coming off, offs are the same. And I sometimes have to look at the back because the front side we've already gone through that stitch and it's already kind of because I'm pulling mine snug it's already kind of tucked into my my cast off area so I have to I have to take a look and see what the back stitch is and then I know it's the opposite inside this one takes a lot of focus yeah so it's coming off off is the same so it's pearl and comes off. The second stitch stays on. On is opposite. It's a knit, so I'm going in purl. So now I'm back to the front. I'm coming off. Off is the same. It's a knit, so I'm going in knitwise. The second stitch stays on. Ons are opposite. I've got a purl, so that means I'm going in knitwise because I'm doing the opposite. Come to the back. The first stitch always comes off. Offs are same. It's a purl, so I'm going in purlwise. And then the second one stays on. Ons are opposite. This is a knit, so I'm going in purlwise. Oops, that was supposed to be an on. He popped off. There. Okay. Let's take a quick look so you can see what it's doing. See that? So our columns aren't exactly lining up, but I think it creates an okay seam. So there's our knit and there's our knit. So whoever said it's off half a step, that's kind of exactly what it is. But I think it gives you an okay seam, right? Instead of just having a solid knit line across there, which would be really obvious. I think this actually works pretty slick. And then there's the other side. It works great. So yeah, I'm not sure why my, my garter stitch, I'm gonna have to look at that. Why on the front side, it was, there was a bit of a gap in there. I don't really like how that looked and it shouldn't look like that. So maybe I just wasn't pulling it tight enough. I'm not sure. Anyways, but it should work. But this looks really nice. That's exactly how it should look. I know, pretty slick, huh? 
doing two by two rib, I can briefly touch on that next week for you because it is, it is the same movements that we did here. It's combining the, um, it's still going in knitwise and purlwise. You're still doing two stitches, front needle and back needle. There's still a setup on the first two stitches, but it is alternating. You're kind of doing going in with your darning needle as if you were for stockinette for a couple of stitches and then you go in for garter stitch for a stitch and then you're switching back and forth which is a little tricky because it just doesn't go front needle back needle you do the front needle as stockinette and then the back is stockinette and then the front is stockinette and then the back is garter like it um part way through like your knit to purl to it's not just knit. So knit, knit isn't all the same. It's half of it is for stockinette, half of it's for garter. And that's where I have to really stop and think where I'm switching from doing kitchener stitching for stockinette to kitchener stitching for garter stitch. And yeah, I need to think on that. So I, I can't do that one and talk, or at least I wasn't going to attempt it tonight because I think we've done enough kitchener stitching for tonight. But I will show you what I um, am going to have to use it on is my headband from last week. Okay, so that was our little learning lesson. So hopefully it was either a review. I saw Amber say it was a good review and hopefully some of it, maybe the garter stitch and the, and the one by one rib was something that was just a little bit something new that you can tuck away for future use. Or the next time you have to YouTube, Google it, you know, on YouTube, search on YouTube. When you, when you watch the video, you'll be like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that, right? Last week's new start, I have a provisional cast on down here. I did the crochet provisional cast on, which I am loving because I seem to be doing it on every single project that I start lately. <laughs> and I have been working this kind of, it's, a, well, the pattern that I went from from the pattern book called it a cross stitch, but I think it's very similar to like a twisted one by one rib. Oh, good, Valerie. I'm glad that that it was helpful for you. So anyway, so I've been working this little four row pattern on this headband and I'm loving how it's turning out. It's not quite as wide as I had wanted it, even though I have started this is about the fifth time I've started this headband. I was having the worst time coming up with, let's see, maybe that'll be all right. Okay, that wasn't good planning, was it? <laughs> Have tails right in the middle there. Um, but anyways, I think it will be really pretty once it's all finished. But I had, yeah, that's the hardest time trying to figure out what stitch pattern I wanted to do and trying to get it the right width. Um, yeah, so I'm liking this. It's not quite done. And I'll show you just so the whole kind of design process and you think this sounds crazy just for something as simple as a headband. Okay, I wasn't having the best hair day to start with and then putting on a headband really didn't help did it. <laughs> um, but for even though it's just like just a headband and you think that's pretty simple compared to, you know, designing a soccer or a sweater or something, right? There's still quite a lot of steps because I did start it quite a few times to figure out how many rows I wanted in between here before I did this cross stitch for the pattern. And then I thought, oh, do I want to do a short pattern here and this next one be longer? and then do a short one and kind of alternate them. And then I thought, no, that's gonna take too much brain power. And thanks, Tracy. And that'll be involve way too much counting and make the pattern row way too long. So I thought, no, we're just gonna keep them all nice and short. So it's, it's only a four row. I started out, when I first started working this, it was 12 rows. And I thought, no, that's like way too, I want something quick and easy, right? So I cut it down and this is what I came up with is that four row repeat. And then starting at trying to figure out how many stitches I wanted. My pink headband was like five and a half inches wide and I kind of liked it. It was the widest headband I think I've ever knit 
because when I put it on, I was like, whoa, this is like wide, but it felt really warm. So I thought, okay, I kind of like that. And I thought, it, so anywhere between five, five and a half inches was what I was aiming for. And y'all know when you start ribbing, because this is a knit two purl two pattern with the stitch pattern worked over the two knit columns. And you know, ribbing, it starts that you cast it on and you've got like this many stitches and then every row you work, it just like pulls and pulls and pulls and pulls in. So I cast on, I thought, well, this is gonna be like really big. And um, then it got smaller and I thought, okay, it's looking really good. And I knit it a little bit more and then I measured again and I'm like, dang, it's like shrunk in even more. <laughs> so I think at last measure, I was at four inches wide and, and exactly amber and it does it covers my ear so i thinking okay so maybe four well you know and i still have my ears not i don't think my ears four inches wide okay i can't if i do that i can't see okay let's go this way so yeah there's lots here covering my ear right like yeah i've got lots so four inches is the doable size for a headband so then i got the size figured out and i thought okay Sizing four inches, well, honestly, I was going to carry on anyways. I wasn't pulling it out again because I thought, this is ridiculous. I want to get this done. This will be my prototype. Carry on. The, one of my first versions, I did the first two stitches and the last two stitches I did just in stockinette because I thought, okay, I don't want it curling. And I thought I want a nice straight edge. So I did stockinette or no, two rows of garter. Two rows of knits with no pattern. Stockinette, but in, oh, okay. Two knit stitches. It is stockinette, but it just looked like like a straight ribbon, okay, with no twist. That's what I want. That's what I did. And I did it, and it stuck out like a sore thumb because there was all these nice patterned columns in here. And then it was without on either edge, and it looked silly. So I thought, okay, scrap that, pulled it out again, started again. And I thought, okay, I'm just going to put the pattern right on the edge. I'm going to twist. And even though it doesn't completely show up, it does look better than when it was just two knit stitches because the columns were wide. It, it made the column wider and it just, it just didn't match. It just like stuck out like it didn't, wasn't meant to be there. So here it is. This side looks lovely. Nice, straight, even, perfect, right? This side, not so much. Did you guys notice when I held it up earlier? Look at that. If I was going, I don't know, if, maybe I should just go with it, block these babies out and make them like Pico edges or something, but look at that, loose stitch. And it was just because the way the stitches are twisting when I twist them, the twist ends up on the very edge here. When I'm twisting it here, the twist turns in. So the twist is here and the flat stitches over here. So it worked on one edge, but not the other. Back to the drawing board. So I went up part way and I thought, cause I kept thinking, well, maybe I just need to pull it snugger or something that didn't work. So then part way, I don't know, somewhere around in here, I thought, okay, when I come, back, work that row back, I will work this last stitch through the back of the loop. So I'm twisting it and hopefully it would kind of close up this extra loop. And you know what? I thought it did. I worked a few rows and I thought, huh, this is working great. So I wrote on my pattern, work through the back loop. And then I did a few more rows because, you know, sometimes you have to, you have to work a few before you can actually see how it, um, Oh, I hope it didn't freeze, Lise. Um, no. Well, you know what, Valerie? I figured it out. So, uh, yeah, again, I just thought, you know what? I just, Sometimes you just have to knit it to get to work all the kinks out, right? So I just kept, I kept going. So knitting through the back of the loop did not help. So what I did, you can see right here where I, I fixed it. There's the last loopy. So what I did was I just right in here, I made one stitch. I knit one, I want. I wanted to add. So I actually have three edge stitches 
on this side of the pattern. On this side, I still just have my two knit stitches, but here I added in one extra knit stitch along there. So now I can work the knit, work the twist, so it still has that loopy edge, but it now has a nice neighboring knit stitch that goes along the very edge and covers it up. And I'm like, oh, this is a lot of brain power, figuring all this out for one headband. <laughs> but now I have like rewrote it. So instead of having 30 stitches, now I'm gonna cast on to write 31. So this one edge will have one extra stitch on there. But you know what? And I thought, you know, for sure my, my, it would come up and it would go because you'd have that one extra stitch. And honestly, you can't, I mean, right, right there. I don't, can you, you really can't right there is where there's one extra stitch, but with the ribbing, it just pulls it in and you don't even know about it. So I'm just going to carry on. I'm going to, I'm going to come back now that I had to join my yarn because I had, I had a knot, but unfortunately. So I've got these tails and you know what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to come back and just tack these down and, and carry on, right? This will be um, I don't know. Maybe I'll keep this for myself. It could be charity knitting, but you know what? I, I will just tack all of these little loopy loops down. And now I know I fixed my pattern so they won't be there for the next one. And this one, you know, it'll look fine once I tack it down. Somebody can wear it. Maybe I may keep it and wear it. It'll keep somebody warm. But I figured out the pattern. <laughs> so there was a lot of uh, naughty yarn. So anyways, that was the design process to figure out that stitch pattern. And now I've got it down pat. Now the only thing I have to do is come back here, pull out my crocheted edge and pick up this two by two ribbing and Kitchener stitch it together. So that will, I will come back tomorrow or next, next week and report on how the two by two ribbing went. I'm going to do actually cast on a little sample two by two and practice the Kitchener stitching on two by two before I try it on here. So hopefully I will have done it, you know, three or four times. And then next Monday I can show you how to do it and uh, tell you if it makes a little more sense to me after I've done it a number of times. So that is that. Okay. Did I tell you guys the winning yarn? I got into sidetracked onto here a little bit and I can see, my gosh, I've been talking a long time. I always like to try to keep these an hour so, cause I know it's late at night for most people. I didn't tell you the winning yarn yet, did I? Did I? I don't think I did. Yes, my new cast on. So, cause I, I, I did this out of order. Normally, I first thing I tell you guys is who what the winning yarn is. And I went right into the, the Kitchener Stitching tonight. So these were the two yarns that I put up on Instagram. And I know this was kind of a tricky, this was maybe wasn't a fair poll, was it? Because both of them are beautiful. And it was really, 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 really close. Oh, I think I started saying that, but I didn't tell you who won, did I? Um, it was really close. So this is Lolo did it. And the colorway is blue jean baby. And look at that. Oh my gosh. Look, it does. Oh, and there's kind of like some greeny, yellowy green in there. Doesn't that pretty? And then, so what is this? So it is her everyday sock base. 75. Oh, Merino. That's why it's so nice. 25% wool. Nice. And this one, the Primrose, this is, colorway is Where Is My Mind? Look at all those pretty colors. I mean, I want to cast both of these on. I pulled this one here out a few weeks ago, and it was going to be 
one of the yarns, but I wanted to make socks with it. And luckily I looked at the back and this is 100% superwash merino, no nylon. So not a good choice for socks. It is the right weight. It is a fingering weight yarn. So it would be the way to yarn to use for socks, but without that nylon it is not going to wear very well. Um, and it is way too pretty to wear, make a pair of socks and wear them once or twice and get a hole in the heel. So this needs to be a shawl. So this, I know, two beautiful yarns and we got lots of votes. And like I said, it was the closest vote that we have ever had since I started doing these weekly polls. And the winner ended up being Primrose Yarn. It is so funny. Every week I do these Instagram polls, what the Instagram poll says and what people leave in the comments on the post always pick opposites. <laughs> and then I have a, I have my way of, of um, kind of figuring and tallying what, what, how it all evens out. And, um, and this one snuck ahead by a little bit. This one here got tons and tons of comments towards the end. This one was the clear winner right off the beginning. So this one's going back in stash and primrose is the one that's being cast on. And it's gonna be another shawl. And I know a two week, couple of weeks ago, two, three weeks ago, I started um, playing around with another shawl. It was actually yarn Amber dyed for me because it just spoke that it needed to be a shawl too. And you know what? I haven't knit myself any new shawls in a while. You know, I think, I think back to some of the ones that I have cast on and, um, Oh, hey, I know. What is it, Joanne? The pinks. I, the universe is shifting because I am not a pink girl at all. And this spring, I have been so drawn to pink. And if it is pink and yellow together, I love it. So, and both of these yarns were gifts. And I love them like this. I know because like this is my color. This is hands down would be what I, I'm always drawn to. And I love this, but you know what? All of these pretty colors, I love those too. So I'm going to cast this one on. Isn't it gorgeous? I can't wait to see how it knits up. And I have no idea what kind of pattern. It's not a complete pink though. No, that's right. And because, and I do like like red. I don't like an orangey red, like fire engine red. I don't really like, but anything that has like a burgundy wine color, I like that. Yeah, I know they're both so pretty. So I'm sure this, this one is going to get cast on soon, but, um, this is the one we're going with this week, guys. So stay tuned. Cause can, I'm going to wind it tonight when we're done here because I can't wait to cast it on or at least start with my swatch. So that was the winning yarn. So thanks to everybody who voted because it is so fun seeing all the, um, the votes and seeing what, what is resonating with people. Blue, red. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I like, isn't it? The blue reds, not the orangey reds. Orangey red just makes me cringe. <laughs> um, yeah. So, oh, you like the fire engine red, Amber? Yeah, not, that's just too red, red, a deep red, a blue red. Exactly. That's what, that's what I like. So, okay. What else can I show you? Just really quick. Oh, Laura, you too. You like the blue, you like the bluey reds? Vocals are warmed up. I know, Amber, I have not forgot. I need to sing to Amber. <laughs> so I'll show you what else I worked on. Oh, so Walter, you like, you're a, like love red. So yeah, red and pinks are not my, not my colors usually, but I'm learning to embrace them. And somebody once told me, which is very true that it's not, I shouldn't, you know, when I shouldn't say I don't like red is like the shades and the tones of different colors. Right. And because there's, yeah, like there's some shades of pink, like a, a really like a, a pastel -y pink is not my favorite, but like a neon pink is, I like that better. I don't know. So yeah, I guess there's different shades of different colors that you like, right? Oh, Walter, no, no to pinks though. 
Yeah, I know. Isn't it funny how our, our preferences are different? So look at this, you guys. This is sock number one. This was New Start Monday a couple of weeks ago. And last week, I think I had it all done, except it just needed the cast off. So I did the Russian cast off that we talked about last week. And I love it. It was easy to do. Um, you know, it was, it was really easy, really simple and easy to work, easy to remember. And that's what it looks like in a solid with the red. And, um, there it is kind of with the red, see how it has that, um, vertical, <laughs> the vertical stripe in there with the blue. And the blue is just, yeah, it has a, just a really nice texture. I'm not sure if it's really focusing well on the camera or not, but I really like how it looks. Tons and tons and tons of stretch. It does have a bit of that ripply look to it, but once it's on, or like when I had it on my sock blocker, it lays, I mean, it looks really nice on. So sock number two is started. How close am I? Oh, I'm getting, I'm getting, well, no, I guess I'm not. I was going to say I'm getting close to the heel. So I guess I better pay attention here. I don't want to, um, don't want to get too carried away and over, over knit when I should be stopping for the heel. So this is, um, I'm loving this doing the toe up. I did the Turkish cast on for the toe. Loved it. Love it, love it, love it. So this is what I worked on. Finished the cast off, got this part of the toe done, got this much of the headband done, and for fun, I threw in another hot mat because why not? <laughs> because I loved this. I loved doing the other one, the tangerine and teal one. I like doing it so well, and it was so quick that I decided to do this in the shades of blue. So it's a navy and that bright blue. And there again, I did, this is what I did all the Kitchener stitching on. That was so rhythmic and relaxing and I really liked it. I cast on with the crocheted provisional cast on. So I took out that cast off and I picked up with my 16 inch needle. I went around and picked up both sides of that and then Kitchener stitched it together. And up top, I just left it on the working needles when I got up here and got my pattern finished and then just Kitchener stitched it closed. And I think both of them turned out really, really nice. So I really like this. I loved the tangerine and teal one. And then I did these ones and I thought, wow, I like this even better. And I can show you. I talked about this on the Fiber Friends podcast, but if you didn't, or if you haven't had a chance to watch that one yet, I can. <laughs> My poor hat was on the floor. So, thanks. I know it, doesn't it? Sometimes you just, you never know what things are going to turn out like until you get them done. And the color, I think, is just like so stunning and bright. But the stitch pattern, so when we go back to color dominance, I held the light blue in my left hand. So it would be the more dominant color. So it would kind of pop out more than the navy. And I got this stitch pattern from the hat that I finished. And these arrows. So what are we down here? So this is the right side up V and the upside down V. I just took this and this and squash them together. And that's that in the light blue. So I was really happy with how it turned out. I like the, the navy space in between just has its own, not quite the same shape, but pretty close. I know I really liked it. I loved knitting this, you guys takes a day. I cast on and cast off all in the same day. Crochet provisional cast on, fair aisle, one color in each hand. And this one I left my floats long. Oh, 
here, I can show you right here. Now I showed you this last week, didn't I? And I had a mistake. I had, I don't, I had, where was I? Somewhere around about halfway, about here. And I pulled it out because I had made, see there again, it goes back to the design. I don't know if you guys want to hear all this design stuff, but what I had done in the pattern, see there's one stitch down here. It ends up with one stitch. I had made this a couple of rows higher. I repeated that one stitch again. And as I was knitting it, it was getting too tall. And, uh, and I wasn't going to be able to finish with a whole pattern without it being like just more, more taller than I wanted it. And so anyways, I pulled it back out and I took out the extra rows that I had started to put in here. And by just taking out those extra rows, um, I actually liked the pattern design better and it shrunk down my number of rows. So I was able to get it closer to a square, which ended up really well all the, all the way around. And it was nice, a 16 inch needle. So it just round and round and round. I think I had I want to say 64 stitches, I think is what I did. 64 stitches and I kept my floats long. So that's what I was going to tell you. I caught, we were talking last, a few weeks ago when we were talking about holding your, your work for stranded knitting. See right there where my, 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 the color that I was carrying, I had knit the light blue. Then I was carrying the light blue across the back as I worked these navies. And I thought typically, you know, if this was a sweater, something where your hand might catch it, going from here to here is just too long to carry that light blue all the way across. So you can see right where I caught it. And, but that's the thing is that you could see it there. And I was like, oh, you know, if it was a sweater, you have to, but because this was a pot holder and all my floats are inside, like they're never to be seen, nobody's gonna catch anything on there. I stopped carrying because I think it was just that that one row that I was carrying across and I just let it go. And it kind of, it was like the knitter inside me was like, oh, going like, oh my gosh, this float is way too long. I should not be doing this. But I did, I just, I, I stopped carrying it. So if you can see up here, I did not catch it. And if there's no, you don't see anything. That float is just running straight along inside without being caught. So there's just that little balance between, do you have to catch it? If you don't have to catch it, you're better off not, because then there's no chance of it just kind of poking through, which, you know, if you have to, you have to, and it's not the end of the world. It's just part of the, the, uh, the character of the, of that stitch pattern. So anyways, that is what I have been knitting all this this week. So what we're going to talk about next week, we'll talk about the two by two Kitchener stitching. You guys maybe are Kitchener stitched out, but I'll talk a little bit about it and the Finchley method method. Okay. That was like a tongue twister. Oh, Lisa was sorry. Lisa was at your comment. Um, what size needle did I use? You know what? I used a 5.5 millimeter weight yarn because, um, Stranded knitting or ferrule knitting typically is tighter. So you usually want to go up a needle size. So, yeah, because normally with with a worsted weight yarn, you're not going to most, unless you're a super, 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 super tight knitter, you're not going to use a 5.5 millimeter needle. You would use like a, a 4.5 or maybe a 5. But I went up a little bit just because carrying those floats and everything generally makes things tighter. So I went up. Yep. And I was kind of, I'm at about seven, seven and a half inches square, kind of, give or take a little bit. It's at least seven. I was kind of going for one at seven and a half, but I think I might've been seven. So I'm somewhere around that area. And I think, I think it'll be a good size. Um, yeah. So next week, the two by two Kitchener stitching, I'll give you my thoughts on that if I like it or not. And, uh, I know, see, and I keep thinking that I think that this would be nice as a hat, as a pillow. I know, I know I really, really like it too. Um, and the Finchley method of grafting. My friend Marg has mentioned it twice to me. She's tried it and she says it works 
really well and it's easy. So I did a little research on it and it definitely looks easy. Oh, a double wrap cowl. It would, I think, yeah, absolutely. It would look nice. It would, I actually did a double knit cowl. It uh, wasn't quite this. It was actually, it was all circles, which, which would be nice. But yes, it would make a really nice color work cowl. Most definitely. So the Finchley method, we will talk about that next week. So it's another method of joining two sets of live stitches together. So it would be perfect for a sock and it is different and easier than Kitchener stitching. Now the Finchley method, I've only seen it done for stockinette. So probably for garter and, and ribbing, you might have to go back to, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, Kitchener stitch. But for socks and stockinette stitch, the Finchley method is another way. You, you're not doing double stitches on the front and double stitches on the back. You still do a setup for the first stitch of each needle. And then you're just kind of going through and back and through and back and through and back. And every time you go, go through two stitches, you're taking one off and come back and take one off. So it's pretty easy too. Now I haven't tried, I don't, think I've tried it on anything. So I'm going to do a couple little samples and try it out and then we'll see what it actually looks like. Now, if Mar I know Marg really well and if she's using it, it has to look good. So because otherwise she would not use it and recommend it. So it's got to look good. So we'll, we'll um, stay tuned for that. And I will kind of give you how, how I do it and, and my thoughts and let you see what it looks like. And then that'll be something else that you can tuck away in your toolbox for finishing your socks. So yes, I do want, I am going to eventually write up some patterns someday soon, hopefully. That's my plan. It's on my list. Yes. Write up a quick pattern. Yes. I am going to, I want to do a bunch of patterns that are, are going to be like easy weekend knits because I mean, I live by myself, so I can very easily sit and knit this in a day because I just have the cat to look after. But I know other people who have other people in their household, maybe, you know, this might be a two day project for you. But, you know, it's definitely an easy weekend knit. And the same with the headband. It would be another easy weekend knit. So I am. Yeah, I will have I will write these patterns up and put them up on Ravelry eventually. Then you guys can can knit them for yourselves or use them as gifts as well. I think that is all. So now let's take, we can take a couple minutes. I know I'm just, we'll just take a couple minutes because I don't want to take up too much more of your time, but, oh, and I do need to sing to Amber. So, oh, a sweater collar would be nice. Yeah, I know that would be, there's lots of things you could use it for, right? So, okay. So Amber, our birthday girl. Amber, I hope you have had a great birthday. So if anybody just wants to put in the last few comments, we can chat for maybe, you know, another five minutes or so, and then we'll wrap up and then we'll come back Monday night and um, with some more knitting, see what, else, see what else I've done this week and the Finchley. I'm really kind of curious to try that and, um, and see. So anyways, so if you guys want to, if you guys know Amber, some of you might know Amber from the Friday night, the Fiber Friends Friday Night Knit In. So I know I sang to her. <laughs> I know I sang to her then. So I today is actually her birthday. So I have to sing again. So plug your ears if you don't want to hear me sing. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Amber. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Amber. I hope you've had, I hope you had a great birthday weekend and hopefully today you had a great relaxing day too. It was hopefully some birthday cake. I know you've been treating yourself to some, some birthday yarn, which is very well deserved. So I hope you're enjoying casting on some of your new birthday yarn. So thanks everybody for watching. This is always lovely doing this live and reading your comments and, and chatting with everybody. So have a great knitting week, everybody. And um, you can leave some, still leave this comment because the replay is up so people can leave comments underneath this. And uh, I'd love to know what you're working on too. I saw I saw a few people posting as, as I was chatting about what, what you've been working on. So... I hope you have lots of knitting time this week and get lots of progress and maybe even get a finish 
one of those elusive finishes <laughs> that I'm trying desperately to have a few more of this year. So anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. Happy knitting, and I will see you next Monday. Bye.